What's up everyone, how's it going? Today we are going to be talking about Leprechaun 3. We are on to the third installment in the Leprechaun franchise. I just caught this film like a couple hours ago and man, this film's batshit crazy and I kind of forgot that it was this wild. So we're going to get into it and of course we're going to have some spoilers. So spoilers ahead, be warned. So let's get down to talking about Leprechaun 3, my retrospective review, rad movie review, you know, talking about this film. Let's get into this. So as I said in my beginning intro part, Leprechaun 3 is definitely one that I, I don't remember it being like this bad shit, like for real. And it came out in 1995, so we have one 93, 94, 95. They're just pumping these Leprechaun films out every year. This one takes place in Vegas, so you could imagine the Leprechaun in Vegas. What kind of antics are we going to get into? And this is a wild storyline. I think so far out of the first three films, this is the most side plot heavy. There's a lot of characters in this film, a lot of stuff going on. So let's get into this. And my favorite character right off the bat, she's not a main, main character. Well, kind of like because she's in it a lot, side plot heavy. But Carolyn Williams... Oh man, as Loretta, she's amazing, and she's also in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, and like, yeah, her character in this film is just amazing. She's my favorite kind of side plot person, but her kill is even as amazing too. So let's get into this kind of the basic storyline of the Leprechaun basically is delivered to this man. It's like a statue, and for some reason he's a statue now, and he has like a pendant on him that prevents him from coming alive, so that's why he's in statue form and like... Don't ask me how that happened because that is not at the end of the second film. So, so he is re uh, brought to a pawn shop by this guy who supposedly is really lucky, but he's missing like a leg. He's missing an eye. He's got like, I think, missing fingers or like a hook hand or something like that. Delivers the statue of the leprechaun with the pendant. And of course, our pawn shop guy, Gupta, he takes off the necklace and he's like looking at it, looking at the pendant and behold, uh, our leprechaun comes back to life. We also have, of course, Warwick Davis coming to reprise his role as the Leprechaun for the third time. Like I said, you really cannot have these films without him. I know the two most recent ones, he's not in it. So when we get to those films, we'll see how they are. But as for this one, like I said, it starts off, that's our beginning point, kind of. And then we start introducing us to other characters like Tammy's character and Scott. And those characters like Tammy's trying to get to work, I think, and her car breaks down. Scott almost runs her down or hits her car, so he promises to give her a ride. And like crux into where we get into she works at the Lucky Shamrock or something like that. It's like a, it's a casino place and all this. And then we get into our, one of our side plots, which is Scott and Tammy, which becomes and ends up becoming two side plots, which ends up becoming two more side plots. Like I said, it's just a lot of stuff going on because we have Tammy dealing with her boss, then her boss dealing with uh, Loretta, who's the one at Scott's table when he's not supposed to be gambling, you know, because he's underage and all this stuff. He's just supposed to give the girl a ride. Then she says, like, he convinces her to let him in so Scott can, like, investigate and see what's going on. So, yeah, it's it's really side plot heavy. Then we cut all the way back after all this stuff to Gupta and the Leprechaun and what he's doing. Because they kind of go ensue going through quite a battle, like the Leprechaun and him. Like, he bites his ear off, bites one of his toes off, and he still survives. And he has the pendant, and they kind of go in and at it for a while. We also have Lee Armstrong in this film. She plays Tammy, and they have her dressed pretty much in her attire for the casino stuff, like, the whole time. So it's very, like, it helps because this film is on that verge of being so bad. I can tell where people can watch this film and be like, it's just so bad, I can't watch this. But for me, I think it kind of falls into that so bad it's good category. Because when you pay attention to the actors, the writing, and all the stuff going on, it's kind of just bombastic all out there like imagine the jokes the kills and all the comedy stuff from the first two films dial that up to 11 and that's what we get in this third film and I feel like the actors and actresses when you watch them in this film it definitely feels like a lot of them knew what was going on at this time and they didn't really take it too serious it really does look like they're having a blast just going all for the broke throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks and as I said, that's probably one of my main problems with this film is there's a lot of crazy characters, but it's very side plot heavy. And like a lot of the characters stuff gets taken away, you know, and you know what I mean? We don't really get to learn stuff about Scott that much or Tammy before we're on to Loretta and her boss's storyline. Then we introduce um, this magician character guy. So it's just people all over the place. And one of our like side characters, Scott, he ends up gambling away all his money when he's not supposed to be gambling. So he has to go trade in his watch 
Then he goes across to the street to the pawn shop, and that's where he finds out about Gupta, who was dead at this time because the leprechaun killed him, and he kind of sees on his uh, computer that he was looking up stuff about leprechauns and all this stuff, and we introduce another aspect of this film is that there's different rules in this movie compared to the first two films, okay? In the first, or the second one, our guy, uh, Morty, caught our leprechaun in a safe, then he got three wishes. This one, for every gold shilling you possess, you get to have a wish. And every time you take more, the more you have, the less the leprechaun has, the less powerful he is. And if you destroy the gold, you destroy the leprechaun. So all these kind of rules are introduced just in this film. So that's what I mean. It's one of those movies where, I like the writers, I don't think they really paid attention, which is kind of crazy. Because like I said, we have one from 93, one from 94, one from 95. These films aren't far apart. But it's kind of like all the different writers and all the different creators, they just took whatever rules they wanted and used whatever they could. And like I said, the Leprechaun's powers are out of this world, like mystical. Like he's right up there with like Pinhead or Freddy in terms of what he can do with his powers or even like Wishmaster being able to do magical things, you know, float things, teleport, like turn stuff into things. Like it's it's wild put pots of gold in people's chests like you know what i mean it's crazy in this one he enchants a tv which is my favorite kill when he kills tammy's boss after she is enchanted by him because he wishes on a coin on the gold shilling that she'll like him and all this stuff so but the leprechaun ends up enchanting a tv this very sexy voluptuous woman comes through the tv and unbeknownst to the boss is ended like hooked up to her like a machine like it's like a robot sex droid and yeah, he gets just all the wattage <laughs> shock in him. It's like, oh man, like, yeah, the kills in this one are bombastic. Like, and even uh, Carolyn Williams, like her kill is pretty wild because she wishes to be hot again. And you know, Carolyn Williams is hot, gorgeous, even as she is in the beginning of this movie. But she wishes to be hot, like her hair changes. She's like more voluptuous, you know, got the booty, got the boobs. Leprechaun catches her, basically inflates her like a balloon, and we get quite an explosion when she gets stuck in a doorway. So, oh man, like their kills are off the charts in this one. So that's what I mean. For this film, I can totally understand where people are like, this film's just shit. It's garbage. Don't watch this one. You can say that probably about a lot of these Leprechaun films, but for me, this one, I think it's so bad that it cruxes into that good area because they knew what they were doing like i said these actors and actresses just go all for it and i had a blast like i have more funny moments with this film that i did with the first film so this one's like kind of right in there with that second film right in that range of a 7.5 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10 because i just had so many laughing moments and bombastic moments with this we also have the sideline story of scott ending up turning into a leprechaun so we have two leprechauns in this film our main one one, dueling with Scott like so we got like I said stuff going on everywhere if you want a bombastic leprechaun movie that just goes for broke throws everything at the wall and dials it up to 11 this is the movie for you thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review chatting about leprechaun 3 I had a blast with this film and laughed my ass off let me know in the comment section what you thought of this film if you've seen it and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing on the channel Pretty soon we're going to be on to the next installments of the Leprechaun franchise. So make sure you click that notification bell and have it on. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.